Hello. Uh, if you follow the Art of Problem Solving Discussion Board on Facebook, you might have seen some of my posts before. I answer a lot of questions that tend to come up about pre-algebra. Um, my kids and I have done all of BEAST, and my older son has done pre-algebra, and he's just finishing intro to algebra. And I thought it might be nice to make a video series to help anybody who's doing pre-algebra this year. My younger son is doing pre-algebra this year, but hasn't started yet. Um, and I don't think he's gonna start until maybe closer to December. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is just put together some things for people who wanted to start the beginning of the year with pre-algebra from Art of Problem Solving. So the one thing I need to point out though, is although I'm pretty good at math, I have never really made any videos like this before. So I decided to just dive right in because I think that's the best way to learn, not just with math, but with kind of everything. So hopefully the quality of my videos get better over time. Um, until that time, hopefully you can put up with somebody who is very much a beginner at all of this. So uh, before you get into pre-algebra, I'm just gonna point out the things that I use um, when I do math. Uh, this is, a, a grid uh, notebook. I actually had my older son switch to Rocket Books more recently, which is a reusable notebook, which was is going to allow him to keep a digital copy of all of his work if he needs to put a portfolio together for a class or something. Um, I only I, I don't have one of those here. I just have a paper one, and this is what we've used up until now, anyways. Uh, but you're going to keep all of your work if you're doing it the way that I do it anyways. You're gonna keep all of your work in something like this. Just a, a notebook full of grid paper. Okay, so make sure you have one of those. I think I got that at Walmart or something. And then I have just the pre-algebra text. I actually got this from some curriculum site for like $25 and they even, that, that included the shipping. So you don't have to spend much. Even the new price I don't think is unreasonable because this is a really long book. This took us about a year and a half to get through. I think with my younger son, it probably won't take as long um, just because I've already done it before and there's a few things that are different about the situation than with my older son. I I'm guessing it'll at least take a year though. On their website, you get free things like Alchemist, which you know, we use as an assessment tool and we use it as a review tool. So typically we'll do anywhere from one chapter to three chapters worth of stuff from here. And then we'll take a week to go into Alchemist and just practice some of those problems over again. It will give you feedback instantly and help you keep track. If you ever need a printed, uh, like a printout showing some sort of math assessment, like if you're a homeschooler and you need some sort of proof of something, Alchemist is a really good thing to do because it keeps a running total of everything that you've done. It keeps, um, you know, you can you can see all the topics that were covered. You can see the percentage of points that you were awarded in each section. It's really handy for something like that. But that's kind of aside from the point you need this. And don't, don't forget to get this. The solutions manual is very important because it's not just the answers. If you ever get stuck, if you're a parent watching this especially, if you get stuck and you don't know how to explain something, this goes into a lot of detail for every single solution. They don't skip anything. It doesn't mean this is the only right way to do it though. I, generally when I work with my son, we sit next to each other and we do it more like Peers. We don't do it every single day that way, but I do it often enough to keep on top of everything that he's doing. So we sit next to each other and we do it as peers. He'll work a problem the same time I'm working a problem. And when we finish, we're gonna say, hey, did you finish that? And we will look at what each other got. If we have different answers, sometimes you know the person who didn't get it correct knows instantly that theirs isn't correct because they see the logic in the other person's. But there's discussion that happens with that. There's times where neither one of us get it correct and that's when this really comes in handy. Um, if we both get it correct and we share strategy, we'll look at the strategy in here as well and sometimes it's the same and sometimes it's different. But that's really handy as, as a part of the discussion. So if you're new to anything Beast Academy or Art of Problem Solving related, just know this isn't like 
what you probably experienced in a math class. This goes a lot deeper. It, you can't just, you know, bump out all these answers and call it done. It's really much more of a collaboration and there's discussion involved and there's really deep understanding and there's a chance for a, um, a relationship to develop as a parent with your child on in a way that you didn't even expect before. That's kind of what ha has happened with my son and I. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't always want to work with me, but lo and behold, once we get going on it, it, it changes and we have some pretty nice discussions with each other. So um, that's where we're gonna get started. So if you're, if you're watching this and you're brand new to this, listen, there is an intro to this that says, for students, how to use this book. Hey, don't skip it. And if you're a parent, don't skip it. Um, I mean, really, this is the people who created this program telling you how to best use the information they've given you. They know how to use it. They put it together to be used in a certain way to get the most out of it. Don't skip this section. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna read this out loud, but if you're somebody who really doesn't like that, then end the video here because you probably don't need to watch anymore. I don't know that I'm gonna do anything beyond that today. Um, but here's one thing. Uh, if you've ever dealt with modalities, um, the idea of modalities is how many different ways your brain receives something. So with information, if you're hearing, that's one modality. If you're speaking, that's another modality. If you're somehow interacting with that in a physical way, that's another modality. If you're hearing it in a song, it's a different modality than if you're hearing it just with words. If you're reading it off a page, that's yet another modality. Point being, the more modalities you use when interacting with information, the more neurons your brain literally builds creates con new connections. The more connections you have to each one of those concepts, the better your brain will remember it and the easier it will be to actually use that information when you need it. Because in the future, these problems will be coming at you from different directions. The more modalities you have used to learn it, the more adaptable your brain is to actually taking that information and doing something useful with it. So I'm going to read this out loud only as a means for somebody who wants to use that as a modality, they can. You're gonna be listening to it. I am not very good at listening to other people read, to be honest, that's not my thing. But I do need to read to myself when I learn something new. So if you're like me, you could knock out a couple of modalities simply by when you read it, maybe read it through with just your eyeballs if, and you know into your brain if that's gonna help you or read it out loud to yourself. I have to read it out loud to myself. This video is going on kind of long and I'm hoping to keep this in the 10 to 15 minute range every single time. Like if you're following along as a lesson, I don't want you to spend more time than that because you know, uh, on YouTube, um, attention spans are short. So even my attention span is short. So I'm going to read this and I, I have my highlighter out Actually, I should probably introduce this too. I use I only use friction pens in math. These are completely erasable. Um, let's see here. Friction. It's like that. Um, I get mine on Amazon. It's the only place I've been able to actually find these. These are so important though. I don't use pencil in math. Pencils get really smudgy. These don't smudge, as you can see, but they do erase completely. And then they have highlighters. Actually, I guess I picked up a marker. This is a marker, not a highlighter. Um, but I like using these as a marker. Sometimes, particularly with geometry type of questions, it's really helpful to have things that are color coded. So I will do that. Um, so here's a friction highlighter. Um, so if I'm writing, I'm gonna write the word friction again. If you miss it, it's F-R-I-X-I-O-N. You can just look them up on Amazon. And like I said, that's the easiest way to buy them. I, I have only ever seen them 
um, in physical stores where they sell like a pack of permanent pens and maybe one of these. If you have a Rocket Book, then your Rocket Book came with one of these. But here's the highlighter. So looks like that. And these come in like so many different colors. But like I said, the great thing is that you can just easily, easily erase these. They write very smooth, they erase smooth, they keep your math super nice and neat. Um, they are heat activated, so if you have a lot to erase, you can actually like use a blow dryer to erase it. If you're somebody who's gonna stay tuned in while we read this, go ahead, and if it annoys you to listen to people read to you, then don't do it that way, but definitely don't skip this. It goes from, it's I, I, I at the bottom. All the way to, to VI, so it's basically Roman numeral three to Roman numeral six down at the bottom. All right, for students, how to use this book? Learn by solving problems. This book is probably very different from most of the math books that you have read before. We believe that the best way to learn mathematics is by solving problems, lots and lots of problems. In fact, we believe that the best way to learn mathematics is to try to solve problems that you don't know how to do. When you discover something on your own, you'll understand it much better than if someone just tells it to you. Most of the sections of this book begin with several problems. The solutions to these problems will be covered in the text, but try to solve the problems before reading the section you don't need to highlight this, but I'm going to. This is really important. If you can't solve some of the problems, that's okay, because they will all be fully solved as you read the section. Even if you solve all of the problems, it's still important to read the section to make sure that your solution is correct. And also because you may find that the book solution is simpler or easier to understand than your own. If you find that the problems are too easy, this means that you should try harder problems. Nobody learns very much by solving problems that are too easy for them. So then they explain the icons here. Explanation of icons throughout the book. You will see various shaded boxes and icons. Concept. This will be a general problem solving technique or strategy. These are the keys to becoming a better problem solver. Important. This will be something important that you should learn. It might be a formula, a solution technique, or a caution. Warning, beware if you see this box. This will point out a common mistake or pitfall. Side note, this box will contain material which, although interesting, is not part of the main material of the text. It's okay to skip over these boxes, but if you read them, you might learn something interesting. Bogus solution. Just like the impossible cube shown to the left, there's something wrong with any solution that appears in this box. Okay. Exercises, review problems, and challenge problems. Most sections end with several exercises. These will test your understanding of the material that was covered in that section. You should try to solve all of the exercises. Exercises marked with a star are more difficult. Most chapters have several review problems. These are problems that test your basic understanding of the material covered in the chapter. Your goal should be to solve most or all of the review problems for every chapter. If you're unable to do this, you should probably go back and review or reread the chapter. All of the chapters end with challenge problems. These problems are generally more difficult than the other problems in the book and will really test your mastery of the material. Some of them are very, very hard. The hardest ones are marked with a star. Don't expect to be able to solve all of the challenge problems on your first try. These are difficult problems even for experienced problem solvers. If you are able to solve a large number of challenge problems, then congratulations, you are on your way to becoming an expert problem solver. Hints. Many problems come with one or more hints. You can look up the hints in the hints section in the back of the book. The hints are numbered in random order so that when you're looking up a hint to a problem, you don't accidentally glance at the hint to the next problem at the same time. 
It is very important that you first try to solve each problem without resorting to the hints. Only after you've seriously thought about a problem and are stuck should you seek a hint. For problems that have multiple hints, use the hints one at a time. Don't go to the second hint until you've thought about the first one. Solutions. The solution to all, uh, solutions to all the exercises, review problems, and challenge problems are in the separate solutions manual. If you are using this textbook in a regular school class, then your teacher may decide not to make the solutions manual available to you and instead present the solutions him or herself. However, if you are using the book on your own to learn independently, then you probably have a copy of the solutions manual in which case there are some very important things to keep in mind. One, make sure that you, that you make a serious attempt at solving the problem before looking at the solution. Don't use the solution book as a crutch to avoid really thinking about a problem first. You should think hard about a problem before deciding to give up and look at the solution. After you solve a problem, it's usually a good idea to read the solution, even if you think you know how to solve the problem. The solution is the, is in the solutions manual might show you a quicker or more clever way to solve the problem, or it might have a completely different solution method that you might have thought not have thought of. If you have, have to look at the solution in order to solve the problem, make sure that you make a note of that problem. Come back to it in a week or two to make sure that you are able to solve it on your own without resorting to the solution. Resources. After completing pre-algebra, you're ready to continue with the Art of Problem Solving's introduction series of texts. The books in the series are Introduction to Algebra, Introduction to Counting and Probability, and Introduction to Geometry. And I think we can reasonably skip over the, the descriptions of those. Introduction to Number Theory. More detailed descriptions and excerpts from all of the above books are available at the Art of Problem Solving website. Art of Problem Solving website also has a wide range of resources for students and teachers, including uh, active discussion forum, online classes, Alchemus, a free adaptive learning system, dozens of free instructional videos. Ah, yes, the instructional videos are really, really helpful. They don't necessarily go over the kinds of questions that I'm going to answer here, but they go over the the content really well. They don't do it doesn't go over every single problem, but it goes over the strategies really well. And um, the guy that puts those together is Richard Rusick, and or Rusick, I think. Anyway, he is quite funny in them, so don't skip those. Those are very good. Um, resource lists of books, contests, and other websites, and much more. You can hone your problem solving skills and perhaps and perhaps win prizes by participating in various math contests. For middle school students in the United States, the major contests are Math Counts, Moens, and the AMC 8. More details about these contests are on page nine and links to these and many other contests are available on the Art of Problem Solving website. Extra, occasionally you'll see a box like this at the bottom of the page. This is extra and might be a quote, some biographical or historical background, or perhaps an interesting idea to think about. So that's all we're doing today. Your job is to make sure that when you come back to the next video, that you have a grid notebook, that you have the pre-algebra text, and that you have the pre-algebra solutions manual, and preferably friction pens and highlighters, um, Obviously, you can use whatever you decide, but I'll tell you, these are really handy because they keep your work so nice and clean, um, and it's the only thing that I use, and I think that's all. So, see you next time.